Disc herniations. Is the disc going backwards or is the disc going to the side or is it going towards the center? That's what we're going to talk about. Welcome. Disc herniations. A major epidemic. Poor posture, rounded shoulders, forward head posture, excessive weight around the gut, lots of sedentary work on a computer, sitting, driving. Realize many of these conditions are from repetitive stress. Poor posture, weak abdominal muscles, weak core muscles, weak stabilizers, extensors as well as flexors, as well as over contracted hip flexors from being in a seated forward position for many hours a day. The discs act as shock absorbers. They are between the vertebral bodies. At the disc level you have nerve roots, 31 pairs throughout the spine and the lower back. These nerves control the lower back go to the kidneys, urinary tract system, male, female, reproductive area, as well as the sciatic nerve, which is made up of five nerves from the lower back going down the buttocks, down the leg. Biggest, longest, fattest nerve of the body is the size of the thumb. So disc herniations. Many people have been making comments and asking me many questions through many, many hundreds of emails over time about posterior disc herniations versus lateral, posterior lateral disc herniations and posterior medial disc herniations. I also want to bring something out to you is that the nerve root comes out in the back or posterior part of the spine. So therefore, anytime you hear posterior and that disc is protruding backwards, yes, you can have a involvement of a nerve affecting a nerve, pinching a nerve and causing pain, distress, not only in the lower back, but down the leg or radiating to other parts as well. But what about anterior disc herniations? Yes, they do happen. That means that the herniation has gone forward up towards the front of the vertebrae, but there are no neurological structures in the front of the vertebrae. Let's take a scenario, a person with sciatica. Sciatica down the left leg, pain, tingling, numbness, cramping. And you or may know of someone who has leaned away to the right side called the right antalgic lean. Now, generally, when you lean away from the left sciatic pain, that's generally a posterior lateral herniation. That means that the herniated disc is lateral of the nerve root. Now, if you notice, a person has pain on the left leg, same leg, and now you or someone else that you know is leaning towards that left leg, that is generally a posterior medial herniation because of the fact that the herniation as in, is on the inside of the medial portion of the nerve root, so they're leaning away from it, okay, or into it, we can say. So we can actually take pressure off that nerve root. Now, again, a lot of people who have posterior disc herniations where the disc has gone straight back, usually that's going to affect the fecal sac around the spinal cord, and it's usually not going to affect directly on the nerve root. But realize when these disc spaces become narrow, from degeneration. Uh, this will allow the holes or what we call the IVF space or the intervertebral foramen to become closer, uh, smaller, making the area become closer together and that in itself can affect the nerve root as well. So the common question is if you have a posterior disc herniation, the disc has gone straight back or it's posterior medial or posterior lateral, what are the best type of exercises for each individual type of condition? I don't want you to worry about that. I want you to concentrate on focusing as a whole global thing. If you have any disc herniation, you must take off weight. You must strengthen core, primarily your transverse abdominis, which is the most important core muscle. That is the muscle that straps around the front anterior part of the vertebral bodies that supports it's kind of like an inside belt that supports that lower back as well. So uh, looking at that particular type of problem, I recommend doing planks. Planks are extremely good. When you do planks, you can see, make sure that the whole entire spine's in line, all the way from the head, shoulder, back, buttocks, legs, and you can see with the feet as well. You can hold that 30 seconds, 
40 seconds. You could do several sets of those. Uh, that will actually work the transverse abdominis. Now, the other particular exercise to work it is sitting up. You take your belly button and draw it in as far as you can. Drink, bring it to your spine and hold that for about 10 seconds and release. Pull it in hard as you can. Hold that 10 seconds, release. You can do a good 10 or 12 of those. They're going to be sore, particularly if you have not done a lot of these. And that you'll feel that deep abdominal muscle start to work as well. Very important, lots of flexibility. Try to get up more often while sitting. Get a support behind your lower back, particularly while sitting and driving prolonged periods of time. But herniated discs, uh, just as well as bulging discs, you have to remember that when something is unstable, it's going to become weaker. Make sure you use good posture and be very smart from the things that you do every day. If you have questions, leave them below. Please subscribe if you haven't. And most important, make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel.